called to order. We will start with our chaplain prayer and pledges. And we have someone new joining us this morning as our new chaplain. Please come on up and lead us. Good morning and thank you, Madam Mayor and Counselors. My name is Father Lorenzo Hatch. I'm the Rector of Sacred Heart Cathedral and a chaplain with the Police Department. Heavenly Father, we come today asking you for guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a council and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that might affect the residents and visitors of the city of San Angelo. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of the greater glory of you and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your most holy name. Amen. And if you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Chaplain Hatch. We really appreciate you being here and offering those words this morning. Thank you. We will now go into our proclamation and our recognitions. Today we have a recognition of Council Member uh, Larry Miller and Council Member Harry Thomas' role in the 2021 American Legion's Memorial Golf Tournament. So if you will come forward, and I will present you with these certificates. Brenda, we would like to know their score, too. I did not play. All oh, whatever. <laughs> we want to know the score, Miller. Maybe they didn't come out on top. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, I think it's one of those things they play in the 80s, but if it gets any hotter, they don't go out. If it had a prize for last place, I might play. <laughs> Don't write down anything more than a triple bogey. We will now go into the public comment portion of our agenda today. Issues or concerns not on the regular agenda may be raised by the public at this time. Citizens should speak from the podium, address all comments to the DS, begin by stating their name and address or single member district number, and limit their remarks to less than three minutes. Do we have anyone in the audience today who would like to offer public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. Larry, do you have anything you'd like to pull from the consent agenda? No, ma'am. Lane? No, ma'am. Harry? Tom? No, ma'am. Tommy? No, ma'am. With that, may I ask for a motion for approval of the consent agenda? So moved. So moved by Harry and seconded by Tommy. Any public comment concerning any items on the consent agenda? With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. With um, no nays, the motion passes 6, or the consent agenda passes 6-0. We will now move into our regular agenda. Comments regarding items on the regular agenda may be made by the public when each item is discussed as outlined above. Applicants, proponents, and appellants are accepted from the time limit above and must limit their remarks to less than five minutes. So the first item on the, on the regular agenda is consider approving 
a proposal to allocate the 2021 CDBG and home grant funds for programs and projects and authorizing the city manager to execute the applications, required certifications, related documents, and annual funding agreement for the appro approximate allocation of $696,269 of CDBG and $333,605 for the home grant funds. Bob, you're on. Good morning, Council. Uh, the annual CDBG and home grant projects and programs are tied to the goals and objectives identified in the five-year plan that Council approved last year. It includes housing rehabs, home buyer assistance, emergency repair, new home construction, and tenant-based rental assistance. You want to go a, back to that first screen, Bob, if you don't mind. Okay. I think I know how to do that. So if, for example, we said we're only going to build 10 new homes this year, that money can be reallocated to the other areas, particularly to additional homes that might need rehabilitation? Uh, we do have discretion to move our funds around within the program. As long as it doesn't exceed the 20% uh, mark, then it becomes a substantial amendment, and then we do have to do some things. But otherwise, the answer is yes, we can. Because for, for this being a five-year goal and knowing that life changes annually and things happen, I would assume that we would want to reevaluate on an annual basis whether we need more rehab versus new homes. Absolutely. And, and we do that during our public meetings, uh, during our um, uh, windshield surveys we take. Uh, absolutely, we do. Okay. Um, here's a graphic depicting the funding trend over the years. Uh, we saw a steady downturn in the 10-year span from 2005 to 2015, uh, during which we had to cut housing division manpower. Uh, we had to go from eight to three. Uh, we cut uh, program coordinators, uh, construction crew, and my admin assistant. That um, is the funding was reduced <clears throat> from yes. the federal government. That is correct. Not from the city of San Angelo. That is, that is correct. And we have to adjust accordingly uh, so we can keep our programs going. Uh, funding has stabilized uh, with a bit of an upward trend over the last several years. So that's a what positive. What does several mean? That's not a number. Uh, well, since 2015, you can see that the, you can see the line going up. Uh, here's our proposal for the home grant. We're asking for 31860 for administration, 71745 for down payment closing costs for uh, first-time home buyers, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 75 for tenant-based rental assistance, and 155 for new construction. Okay, so you said <coughs> for the past several years the money has gone down, so on the administration piece of it, that is the reduction in staff levels? Uh, no, ma'am, the, the okay, 75, so what is that? Uh, the 75 was, they, they actually, uh, during the COVID period, uh, they increased the cap for administration, and we took advantage of that. Uh, now it's back to 10%. <clears throat> so when you say you took advantage of that, what does that mean? We just we, we earmarked the uh, the allowable amount of funds for administration. And how do we use that? Because well, we use it for uh, to pay staff. We use it for uh, um, things like equipment, vehicle maintenance, just the traditional administration uh, cost uh, expenditures that most divisions, more departments have. Okay. Yes, Harry, please. <clears throat> Bob, I, I think one of these slides just before this showed that you had a reduction in staff since 2005 from eight to three. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, those, those three individuals basically work through the federal money that we get for these home funds and, 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 and those items. Is, is that That is, that is correct. They get paid through, this, through these grants. Okay. They're not general funded individuals. We have, to, we have to act like a 501c3 for the most part. Um, here's our proposal for the CDBG grants. Uh, we're asking for 137 for administration. Why is that up from the prior year? I'm sorry? Why is that up from the prior year, your administration costs? I believe that we used, um, let's see, uh, 
Uh, because of the allocation. Again, we're, we're set at 20% uh, for administration, and as that goes up, we adjust, and that's what happened. Uh, we're asking for 118 for rehab program delivery, um, 144 for siding and paint for our blitz program, 115 for housing emergency repairs, 136,000 for debt payment for the section Don't 108 Talk loan. to me about that debt payment. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we should be done by uh, the last payment is due uh, August the 1st, uh, 2030. So we have another. Is that because we build houses and borrowed the money? Or what <clears throat> That's is because that? We, uh, that was for Producers Park. Uh, we did borrow the money from, from our allocation to build Producers Park and to renovate Rio Vista. That was about uh, close to $2 million, and uh, we have to repay that annually, and that's what this is. This is the annual payment. Yeah. So it would seem to me the biggest challenge is needing more money for the rehab and emergency repairs, and I'm not sure where that's going to come from based off of this allocation as presented. Code compliance, what is that? Is that, uh, that paying for people? Th that pays for a one person to dedicate their time in our target areas. That's what that does. It's part of our neighborhood revitalization strategy. Okay. Uh, in addition to the CDBG and home funded housing programs, uh, division staff oversees and manages other activities uh, funded through other sources. It includes indigent cremation, homeless emergency sheltering, continuum of care, rapid rehousing program, uh, it's a grant through the Texas Homeless Network, uh, subrecipient oversight, grant management, and of course, rental What's mortgage assistance. What's subrecipient the oversight? I'm sorry? What subrecipient oversight? Uh, some of our home funds, we actually have subrecipients. We have to monitor them uh, ma uh, monthly and annually. And we, and we, oh, we, they provide us reports. We send those to HUD. We kind of manage to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing based on the funds we give them and based on our contract we have with them. So that's, what, that's what that is. Um, and if you recall, um, we did get uh, CARES Act funding throughout the year. Uh, we had the, the first... The first round, uh, those two have already been spent, and we're working on our third round, uh, 5, uh, 582 at this point. And what is targeted for that 582? Uh, what's targeted? We have um, we we uh, we have two subrecipients. Uh, I think we maybe recall. What? You, you have two what? Two subrecipients that are taking the. They got some projects. One is uh, rental assistance for special needs through MHMR. And the other one is through the uh, Concho Valley Community Action Agency for utility assistance. And then we have the rest of that. Come, we, are ma we manage that for rental assistance, rental and mortgage assistance. I think we'd like a total breakdown on that 582. Sure. Um, yeah, we sure can. And basically, uh, if council approves the allocation proposal, we'll populate the annual action plan and we'll send that to HUD. And we're asking for approval. Do I have questions for Bob from Council? No questions? Then do I have a motion for approval? Move. Is there a second? Okay. A second by Tommy. And I still want that 582 broken down yes, for the Council. Do. Any public comment? No public comment. We'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion passes 6-0. Item B, first reading and public hearing of an ordinance amending Chapter 5, Business and Commerce, Article 5.02, Alcohol Beverage Regulation, Section 5.02.005, Sell, Possession, or Consumption in Texas Bank Sports Complex, the Rio Concho Sports Complex of the City's Code of Ordinances, to include all areas of Texas Bank Sports Complex, including the parking lot, unless sold by contracted concessionaire. And Brent, you're on. Good morning. Obviously, I'm not Mr. White. I'm a little yeah. bit taller. But <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Mayor, Daniel, council members. So uh, last month, we brought in three separate options and was guided by council to come back with op what was option two to include uh, the parking lot, the park, and all areas of Texas Bank Sports Complex to be added for the no alcohol ordinance. Uh, so that is what we are here today to uh, 
seek approval of. We did uh, talk to the Park and Rec Board and many other people uh, since the last meeting, and there's kind of mixed feelings about it um, from a lot of the people that I've discussed it with, uh, one being the campers, another one being, you know, if they can't do it in the parking lot, what's going to stop them from crossing Bell Street and doing it at the park that's right there with the parking lot that goes along the river? Well, they'd have that option. Yes, ma'am, they would. So there's just concerns out there. So Well, I've talked to a lot of citizens about it, and what the input I've had from citizens is we need to take action. What's gone, what has gone on out there has made a lot of people very nervous and very concerned. So... And I agree 100%, you know, the uh, actions that happened in May definitely don't need to happen again, but you know, um, and we are looking at different ways. That was a rental. That wasn't one of our programs, even though the individual was a citizen of San Angelo. That was a rental, not our program from the Recreation Department that was going on at that point in time. So the rules still apply, and we're adding more rules to that uh, for the rental of the, and working with SAPD on how many officers need to be out there for rentals and things like that. So When it's on city property, we need to be very aware and control the situation. Do I have questions for Brent from council? Tommy? Just a comment. Since you've come to us with this seeking uh, a change, you're no doubt going to monitor this on a go forward basis. If we need to make some other changes, obviously you can come back to us. So if this turns out to be way too much overreach, and you hear, you know, you start losing business, then you can come back to us and say, maybe we need to tweak this. So to me, this isn't a, a final, final, final. It's just seeing, an attempt. Yeah, yeah, it's an attempt to, to, to put a little, a little more control on, on what has gone on in the past. So, Sir. yeah. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from council? If not, then let's, uh, may I please have a motion for approval of item B? So moved. A move by Tommy, a second by Tom. Any public comment? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lori DeSello, the chair of the Parks and Recreation Board. And at our last meeting on June 24th, discussions were held on the recreation policies included, but not limited to the policies of the Texas Bank Sports Center. The three choices were proposed were no change to the ordinance, changes to this ordinance to extend the area to include more, and three, which we understood as council's choice, which is to include all the park inside its boundaries. <clears throat> no action was taken it as those in attendance did not like the choices as presented. Some felt that this ordinance amendment was made too quickly and our board was not able to evaluate any other options. We would like to know if any other options were evaluated, what their impacts were or are, and what policies are in force at other city venues. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Yes, I have a public comment as a private citizen. So oh, again, I'm Lori DeSello at um, dist Member District 6. I believe that the rental agreement changes could be made to make the reserving party accountable for the participants and spectators' behaviors. It is also my understanding that a certain renter has made changes to their tournaments that restrict their participants in a similar fashion as this proposed change. Isn't that better than making more rules or law changes as these law changes may not help with their enforcement? It only seems to restrict our freedom of choice. Thank you. Thank you. Any other further public comment? 
With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor of approving item B, say aye. Aye. Any nays? With none, motion passes 6-0. Item C, first reading and public hearing of one, an ordinance for CP21-03, an amendment to the City of San Angelo's comprehensive plan changing certain lands from the neighborhood to the commercial future land use on property located at 404 and 412 Prizer Street. And actually, we'll take both of those together if you wanted to read the second one. And the second one is an ordinance for Z21-07, a rezoning from the low-rise multifamily residential zoning district to the office commercial zoning district being 0 .880 acres at 404, 412, and 333 Prizer Street. Thank you, John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. As you mentioned, this is a both a comprehensive plan amendment from neighborhood to commercial, as well as a rezoning from a residential district to a commercial district. Uh, you can see on the map there the uh, properties uh, in question, most, mostly right here, but then a, a property catty-cornered uh, across the street. I'll note that these the, the uses proposed for the site are already existing there. And so this is a cleanup to the zoning. Uh, you'll notice that there is one opposition uh, from a neighbor um, not wanting commercial to encroach into the neighborhood. But again, this is uh, an existing alcohol treatment for teens kind of use that, that is already in existence. Uh, but it's been in existence in the multifamily zoning for some time. How this, was it allowed to be in a multifamily I, zoning for I believe a long it just time. predated um, the, the requirements there. And so now they're, they're wanting to clean up. They're, they're changing hands uh, from one organization to another that's going to be running. Uh, and so they wanted to make sure it's legal uh, you know, on that property uh, instead of just non-conforming, which would still allow it to continue, but they want to basically legalize the use on the property. Um, as you can see here, this um, uh, Emmerich Street is is kind of a pretty stark line there, where you know everything to the the west is uh, designated commercial, uh, everything to the east there is designated neighborhood. Uh, this would just be a slight encroachment into that area. As you can see, this area, the one property is already planned for commercial, uh, so it is adjacent to a, an, a larger area planned for commercial. Uh, but as you can see on the right, it is. Um, multifamily zoning uh, currently. Uh, a lot of the homes in the area are single family, but again, it is zoned for uh, apartments and, and that kind of use. You can see a little bit here and here that there are uh, non-residential zonings close by. And again, we did send out our notices. We received the one opposition there you can see right at the edge of the 200 feet. Um, their basic uh, comments. We received that late, so it's not in your packet, but basically was the desire to keep the area residential. Uh, ironically, this, this person is in the area that's already planned for commercial uh, rather than being in you know, the, the larger residential area off to the east. So all of the green is currently residential? No, on this map, the green are just the properties that received notices. But um, how many of those uh, are residential is my question then? I couldn't tell you how many of those, if, if we go back to the previous, well, I'm not sure what I did. John's through. Well, he's done. He is done. Um, what, what was your uh, statement? Don, John's done. Oh, no, nope, he's back. There we go. Um, you know, it, it'd be nice that we don't have the map zoomed out larger, but you can see here that, um, you know, the, these are all residential uh, adjacent, and it looks like those are residential as well. Um, so, I mean, it is largely a residential area, but this is a, a small-scale <laughs> treatment facility in a residential-type structure. So it's, you know, it's not like it's a convenience store or something like that. It is a... But, uh, but when we change the zoning, would it allow for a 
pro a, a business such as that. It, it could, you're right. It could. If that, if that goes away, it could be a, a more intense business, although uh, we are proposing the zoning to neighborhood commercial. Uh, the name implies that the uses allowed in neighborhood commercial are intended to be compatible uh, within or adjacent to neighborhoods, so it's not a general commercial or heavy commercial zoning. Uh, so uh, we believe it is still appropriate. So it's still controllable. Uh, right. Um, I won't read through all the rationale, but basically what, what I've just them. said, it, you know, it is a transition area. It's right next to commercial, uh, and so it's just a slight extension of an existing commercial area uh, rather than it being sort of right in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, it is a needed facility, and like I mentioned, it's already um, operating at that location. And it is, the, as I mentioned, the neighborhood commercial is the least intensive zoning district that would allow that use. Uh, staff's recommendation is to approve both the plan amendment and the rezoning, and the Planning Commission also unanimously recommended approval. Do I have questions for John from Council? With none, then do I have a motion for approval? So moved. So moved by Harry, seconded by Second. Tommy. We got a lot of activity on this left-hand side. Yeah, uh, Harry and I are the only ones at the meeting today. So with that, is there any public comment? With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 With none opposed, motion passes 6-0. We'll move, move to item D, first reading and public hearing of an ordinance for Z20-03, a rezoning to the Central Business District zoning district from the general commercial, general commercial, heavy commercial, office commercial, light manufacturing, office warehouse, and low-rise multifamily residential zoning districts generally located north of West Harris Avenue, east of Santa Fe Park, south of West 4th Street, and west of North Chadburn. Thank you. And John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. Uh, this is um, the, the next step. You may remember that we proposed an expansion of the Central Business District Zoning District uh, down kind of in this area. We, we split up the area and are looking in quadrants, so we, we already looked at the, that southwest quadrant. So this, we looked at the northwest quadrant, uh, and you'll see on the downtown map, this is our downtown plan, the future that the plan envisions for future expansion of downtown, you know, includes all the way over to the river and up to Houston Heart. So we we looked at that entire area, and you'll see on some of the upcoming maps how we uh, we excluded some of those areas, and then it, throughout the process of going through the planning commission, more areas were excluded as uh, as was the discussion. So basically, what comes to you today is. All the properties where there was no opposition and you'll see that we anybody who basically said they don't want to be rezoned to central business district now was left out uh, of this proposal that makes a, quite a hotch hopscotch kind of story going not on. really I mean it, it sort of extends the boundary like this I think there are a couple of holes that it leaves uh, in the middle but like over here this is all already central business district so it it's really still a fairly logical boundary uh, but as you'll see, like this little spot there, uh, that sort of sticks out. But that was a property owner who actually we didn't include, and they came to us and said, hey, I want to be included. What so about we, the ones who said, I don't want to be included? The ones that did not want to be mm -hmm. included? Yeah, all of those. Anybody who let us know that they did not want to be included have been left out uh, of this proposal. So that one little area, so if would it create a scenario such as a scenario where that – big sign in downtown would be allowed? Well, there are two answers to that. One is the central business district zoning does prohibit billboards. Uh, and so any of the places left out would still allow billboards. Give me that exact address of the one that's been the, the one that. Out. Well, actually, I think on a different map it shows. So here, uh, this map on the left shows all of the properties that we originally looked at, including uh, in the Central Business District zoning. Um, and so the map on the right shows the ones that we excluded. So we excluded all of this north of Fourth, which is currently zoned industrial, and a number of those properties are used for outdoor storage and industrial type activities. And they and have they a billboard. Uh, yes, they could. Um, and we excluded the car lots over here, and then some of this, the McDonald's and other things that are more 
highway oriented uh, commercial and not so much downtown. Uh, but then all of the rest of this we believe are, are either downtown compatible or areas where downtown type uses could be uh, expanded. And you'll note as if you drive through that area, a lot of those buildings are already built right up to the street like downtown buildings. So in fact, they're actually non-conforming in their current zoning districts. And that's why many of these property owners were fine with the rezoning because it, it takes what is currently non-conforming and makes them conforming. Uh, and as you know, the central business district allows a lot more uh, range of uses uh, in addition to not requiring uh, parking and, uh, you know, reduced standards like building setbacks and things. So it, um, unless you're doing something like heavy commercial or industrial type uses, the central business district actually allows more flexibility for development and redevelopment of those properties. You um, have the one marked added Palmer properties. Talk about that. Yeah, we initially excluded that, but that's a property that in talking with uh, <coughs> Mr. Palmer, uh, they ultimately decided because of the building setbacks, allowing them to build their building closer to the street and what they're proposing on the property, the central business district zoning actually worked better for them. So originally he asked all of the Palmer properties to be excluded, uh, but then after looking at it, he said, well, that one let's add back in. So we went ahead and did that as well. Does that include the... Um, got to think of the word where they manufacture all of that. Yeah. Yes. No, that that's over here. So that was part of the property that was left out. This is actually, I don't, I'm not sure if it's vacant now or if they're going to clear something, but it's, it's a part of the property where they're proposing a separate new building. Uh, but again, it, it so we is, wouldn't want that feed mill thing to grow downtown. Uh, no, no, but it, We've left that property out, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's already there, basically, and so it would be allowed to continue under that well, zoning. Yes, what's they, developed is, that's correct. Now, they could expand on that existing site, but because basically what's around it uh, is mostly being rezoned to Central Business District, it wouldn't allow them to expand outside of the property they already own. Do you have, does someone have any questions or comments at this point on the presentation? I have Harry. one, Mayor. Uh, so, if there was a way that Palmer decided to move the feed processing area to another property in the community, would we automatically try to get that property owner then to come into the central business district? Personally, I think I don't think it needs to be downtown, but it's been there for such a long period of time. I don't let you sure you're going to do anything. But as we expand the downtown area for additional businesses to come in, that's going to be one area where people don't want to be around just because of what it, you know, what it is. So yeah, I, I think definitely if they were to move out, we would definitely look at rezoning that to Central Business District so that whatever redeveloped there would be consistent, more consistent with the downtown. Uh, again, that's that was kind of the back and forth in this. Uh, our long-term plans that, that uh, is in our adopted comprehensive plan has that whole area up to the freeway as part of downtown, but there's a lot of heavy commercial and, and industrial type businesses there already. And so that's the question of timing. And I think we're, we're comfortable saying that this fourth street is a good boundary to say, let's, move, let's allow movement of the CBD to, to that point allow the industrial and heavy commercial uses to continue. Um, but over time, you know, maybe 20 years from now, or at some point, we might look at it again and say, okay, we're way, now we're it's way time behind for those. the curveball on getting a historic district established. And as you know, there, we uh, got a grant last year to hire a consultant to do a historic downtown uh, district study, uh, which is being finalized. In fact, we were required by the state to uh, complete that by September 1st. And so uh, we're expecting the final uh, document uh, probably this month. Um, and then that, that they will make recommendations on a boundary of a historic district. Although with that, we're focusing more on kind of the core downtown, um, uh, you know, Concho and out a few blocks in either direction from that. In terms of a historic district, we're really not looking at this far. But I want to go back to your earlier question. I said I had two answers. I only gave you the first one. The second one is, although these areas would allow uh, billboards, 
we're also looking at, and it's it's been tabled at the Planning Commission, but it should be coming to you fairly soon, is expansion of that downtown design district, and that would also prohibit billboards and require development in this entire area to go through a, a historic or a design and historic review, uh, either through the DHRC. Don't we need to be commission. doing that at the very same time that we're doing this? Because well, we, you're leaving a window open. Yeah. Well, we and in that window, someone will find the opportunity. We did bring these together, but like I said, the Planning Commission moved this forward. They asked us to um, basically slow down a little bit on the downtown design district, hold a town hall meeting where residents could come and hear what we're proposing, um, which I think that's scheduled for later this month. Uh, but then it should be going back to the Planning Commission and then, and then on to you all. Our thinking was getting this done now at least protects those areas, even if it takes a month or two to come back with the, the larger design district. And I think I have a map you asked about. How does that relate to the historic district that we're trying to create? So it looks like you have a lot of moving parts going on here, and I'm not sure they're all linked together correctly. Well, I th in my opinion, they are. We're taking them, you know, they're, they're kind of independent, but they're all interrelated. Uh, but I think we can do the central business district rezoning, which is really about land uses and development regulations. Uh, we can take that now. It, it's not required to do the others uh, at the same time. Uh, next, we'll bring the downtown district, which is really just more of a design um, and, uh, for example, limiting billboards uh, is one of the things that it does. Um, but that is really independent. It's kind of an, we call it an overlay, but so it the, is an open door. Well, but it's an open door today. So we're closing part of the door or what we're closing one door. And then the next step is to close another door. Um, Why aren't we doing them together so that it all links in totally? Well, we believe they all do link together. Like I said, we brought them to the planning commission together. They were fine moving this forward to you all. Uh, we didn't see any reason to hold this up because it really is independent, even though we designed them to work together. Um, but like I said, the Planning Commission wanted to table the downtown design district, uh, but it will be coming back as well. But again, we didn't see any reason to hold this up because it does different things and does implement some protections. It doesn't do everything, but we'd rather get 50% of the way there and then the other 50% rather than waiting on all of it to go at once. I will point out these, this map shows the additional properties. When the Planning Commission tabled it last time, they said, yeah, we'll approve it, but we want you to contact all of the properties that would become non-conforming. Uh, in other words, the, what they're doing now would be allowed to continue, but wouldn't technically be allowed under the Central Business District, which would limit their expansion and those kinds of things. Uh, and so the properties here in blue, uh, a few in here and a couple up here, those were the ones that we contacted that said, hey, no, we want to be out uh, of the district. I, I will point out, one of the things that this does is get Central Business District zoning for the full length of Chadburn all the way up to fourth, with one exception, and it's this little property here that has a finger out to fourth. And the reason I point that out is that little finger right there is where that existing billboard is going in. Now, we're too late to prevent that one, uh, but with this change, uh, no more billboards would be allowed on Chadburn, you know, from fourth <laughs> all the way down uh, to the river. Uh, and so, again, this, it doesn't close every door we want to close, but it's the first step in, in doing that. And so the, the rationale for this, I, I think I've mentioned most of this, but uh, it, it's leaving out the, the lot manufacturing. Again, one of the reasons a lot of that stuff up there is not actually manufacturing or a lot of industrial uses, but one of the differences between that zoning and the CBD is that the manufacturing zoning allows more outdoor storage. And so a lot of those businesses store a lot of things outside. In the central business district, that's limited to only 10% of the site. So that would create some issues for some of those businesses, which is one of the reasons they wanted to be left out. Uh, I already mentioned we, we left out the auto dealerships and hotel uh, across Bryant uh, just because those if those ever become part of downtown, that's going to be a long way off, and those are really not downtown-oriented uses. And again, I think I mentioned we've r removed the non-conforming properties that, uh, that the owners ask to be removed. So here is the notification. Um, so we, we did receive one in favor 
uh, none in opposition, and what I mean by that is none that are affected. We did receive some uh, properties that were opposed, but those are now the ones we left out. And so with the properties as proposed, uh, there, are, there are no longer any opposition, basically, because we left everybody who opposed it out. And so, I, I mean, I think I've mentioned all this, some of the concerns of the property owners. Uh, a couple of others were intermodal containers, those uh, uh, sea container type things uh, are allowed under, with some restrictions, but in manufacturing, um, but those wouldn't be allowed in central business, and we've already discussed the billboard uh, and outdoor storage issue. So again, this area is planned in the city's adopted plan for future expansion of downtown. Um, that's part of the reason we, we looked at doing this uh, to begin with. Uh, CBD development standards are more permissive and allow more redevelopment in that area, particularly of mixed use kinds of things. Um, Another one of the reasons we brought this forward is we've seen four or five rezonings in this area where individual property owners have asked to be zoned CBD, and we thought we would make it easy on everyone, just let's zone a larger area so each property owner, when they come in to redevelop, doesn't have to go through that process uh, each time. Uh, and it does give an area for, we're seeing more and more things happening in the downtown and like I said, people are buying these buildings at the fringe and converting them to more downtown type uses. This helps uh, encourage that uh, additional. How broad or how limited is that word manufacturing? For example, if someone was going to be a beer, a beer distillery or a whiskey distillery, is that called manufacturing? It depends. Um, in, in most cases, it would be if it's the large-scale operation like you're talking about, but we do have some provisions in the zoning ordinance. For example, uh, a brew pub that, you know, they they do some brewing, but it's really like a bar that actually brews their own stuff. They can do that on site, so that's something okay. you could do in the downtown. But if it was a full-blown distillery, then that probably wouldn't be allowed, but part of it is size and whether or not it's accessory to another use like a bar. And that's similar for other kinds of manufacturing. If, you know, we've, we have some businesses that um, it's craftsmen that build some things in the back and then they sell them in the front. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things are allowed. But if it's a, you know, a big <coughs> manufacturing operation, then it's not. Um, and our ordinance kind of makes those distinctions. So if I'm going to open up a whiskey distillery and then have a tasting room, all of that would be allowed? Well, again, it depends on, on the scope and size of things. So if... You know, if, you, scope, if you've got a if you've got a twenty thousand square foot distillery building, and you have a little you know twenty by twenty room that you do tastings, that's probably a distillery, and the tasting room is accessory to that. Uh, on the other hand, if you've got a bar that's the primary use, but you also brew, then the brewing is accessory to the main use. So it really falls on what which use is the primary use. And that there are a few things that go into that. One is just the space used, but it's also uh, volume of sales and some of those kinds of things. And at least with beer, that you know moves over into TABC state regulations on you know which is which kind of thing. Yes, Harry. One other question before John gets completely out of this area. So, John, when you and the staff had conversations with these property owners and a few of them opted out. Did we talk to them about if they ever got rid of the property, we'd be interested in bringing them into the central business district? I mean, did we have that conversation with them? I don't think we specifically talked about that. I mean, we, we talked with them about the pros and cons of, of going CBD. We also, you know, reassured them that even if they went CBD, what they're doing today could continue, uh, but it would it would limit expansions and, and some of that kind of thing. But uh, and I should say, some of the property owners we contacted were okay with the change. Not everyone that would become non-conforming said no. I don't want to be in. There were some that said, yeah, I, you know, we're fine with that. As we move forward, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to ask and see if I can rephrase this uh, is. I'd like to take all those blue properties and make them red on your chart at some point in time in the future because I think it's key to the success of the downtown area if we have the same standards for everyone. Sure. 
uh, that's why I made the comment I did about Palmer. You know, that, that's, a, that's a good business, but I don't like it being right downtown. So, you know, from my perspective, if that ever sold, I'd like to try to change that to the, the Central Business District and do what we need to do. And if the property owners know that up front, when they get ready to make a change, sell the property, do whatever, it is, then they know that we're going to anticipate changing that property to Central Business District. Thank you, Harry. And actually, I, the only other thing I had was just that staff does recommend approval of this. And as I mentioned, the Planning Commission also uh, recommended approval. Uh, again, their recommendation was based on basically excluding anyone who wanted to be excluded, which is how we've brought it to you all. Are there further questions for John James? I got one, Brenda. What? Go ahead, Tom. John, so basically, we're just moving out a protective perimeter, correct, to protect downtown. Well, pr protect Shutting some doors to make things cleaner. Yes, but also encouraging the redevelopment of those properties under downtown standards rather than heavy commercial or industrial type standards. All right, with that, do I have a motion for approval? So moved. So moved by Harry. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Tom. Um, any public comment? With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. We will move on to item E, first reading a public hearing of an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2020 and ending September 30th, 2021 for capital items and grants. And Tina, you're on. Thank you, Mayor. Tina Dersky, Director of Finance. I have for you this morning a couple of budget amendments, the first one being the budget for the American Rescue Plan Act grant that the city did receive. Uh, we've received half of that to date. We're budgeting for the $16.6 .6 million in revenue and for um, a placeholder of $8 million for the College Hills drainage project as we discussed in the planning session. Uh, when the bids uh, come back and are awarded by you, City Council, we will true that up to whatever the actual amount of the bid is um, so that the full amount of the project is available for them for use. The remainder of it will remain restricted um, pending Council action. But we don't have that revenue yet. We do, we have a promise for the revenue so we-, uh, we The eight million. We have the cash in hand of, a, of half of that, about yeah, 8.3, yes, ma'am. But when we receive a grant award that's guaranteed, we budget for the full um, revenue amount. And that way, um, if their bids come in a little bit higher, we're able to go ahead and budget that expenditure as well on the okay. same side. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, and then, of course, we have auction um, and insurance proceeds and equipment right, replacement fund that's for damaged vehicles and um, insurance. And then, of course, their auction proceeds. So they're going to go ahead and budget that revenue so that they can use it for further uh, replacement of equipment. And that's all I have. You have a motion for approval of the budget amendments no moved by Tommy, seconded by Second. Lane. Any public comment? With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. With none opposed, motion passes 7-0. I mean, 6 zero, sorry. We will now move into the closed session, of which there is none. So we will move into item eight, follow up and administrative issues. A, consider items discussed in closed session, which there are none. B, notification that our next meeting, July 20th, 2021, will be in the east mezzanine of City Hall. It will not be in this room. And then we need a discussion of alternative dates for September 21, 2021. And why is that, Julia? We have a council member that has a scheduling conflict, and so we just wanted to see if there's an, an alternative date that everyone was available. Um, I think it's pretty we, hard to keep changing these dates. Yeah, and we don't have to have full council um, present, but that is probably the day when we'll be adopting the final budget. They will be in every one of the council meetings and discussions. This, this was this was me. Um, I should have checked with Julia before. I know. I should have checked with Julia first. For some reason, I was operating under the assumption we had to have all seven council members to vote on budget and set tax rate. We do not. She just confirmed. So, no, y'all go ahead and have the meeting without me, but I will not be here on the 21st. Okay. Plans change, and maybe you will. Well, maybe I will. Okay. I can't believe you made a all decision right. without asking permission from <laughs> Julia first. Okay, so that's finalized there. Announcements and consideration of future agenda items. Yes, Tom. I need one in Shane, Kelton, and Patrick are probably not going to like this. I would like to have the next meeting or two, probably a brief two or three slide presentation, Shane, on 
residents' responsibilities on mowing and easements and care of their property lines where it's adjacent to a street or a property. I've got several people up and down Lakeview Heroes that are receiving their first phone calls and notices of what they have to mow. So I just would like to bring this up, talk about what somebody's responsible for and their care once they place a fence between there and the street and who actually owns that property. Okay, thank you. With that, may I please have a motion for adjournment? I'll move. So moved by Tommy, seconded by Lane. Are there, is there opposition to this? None. With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passes 6-0. Our meeting is, in fact, concluded at 9.22 a.m. on July the 8th.